So as I said, or as we read here, the first 11 cards are going to um, walk us through the dimensions here. And so she talks about how the images of the first dimension shows a black background and in the center a pale blue dot. Um, so she does give you that understanding of what we're seeing um, and so um, and then build from there which I really do appreciate in a deck that um, is, is going for specific concepts. So I'm going to read this first card um, so you can get an idea of the text. The image of the first dimension shows a black background and in the center a pale blue dot. This can be seen as nothing more than a small one-dimensional point, but looked at from a different perspective, it is much more than this. Somewhere at the outer edges of the spiral galaxy we call the Milky Way, this small blue dot reveals itself as a planet, our Earth. The closer we come to it, the more it reveals. The blue is of oceans, liquid water, which, as far as we know, is not found elsewhere in our universe, within which swim immense, intelligent sea creatures. In the thin layer of atmosphere above the seas, birds and insects wheel, dive, and sing. On the five land masses dissected by mountains, deserts, and rainforests live many extraordinary creatures, including a species we call human. Wondrously intelligent, these beings have expanded past the planet's ability to easily contain them. But instead of reflecting on this, they are busy attempting to make space for themselves by killing off every other living thing, including the trees that keep the planet habitable. We have always wondered why there has been no contact from the myriad of other worlds in the immensity of space. Perhaps they are waiting to see if we can survive the challenge to grow into full consciousness. To return to the first dimension, here a dot has no depth, weight, or height. It's just a dot. It ought to show us how wrong our perception can be. After all, the closer we get to our beautiful blue planet, the more we realize it is not just a dot, but an entire world, and we certainly don't live purely in the first dimension. Having said that, our intelligence and self-awareness is both miraculous and simultaneously unbelievably limited. Suggested interpretations. If you draw this card, think of it as a wake-up call. We get them every now and again as a blessing from some phenomenal conscious entity. See number 11, Cosmic Consciousness. I love decks that connect to other cards. Such as a wake-up call often, such a wake-up call often arises from a global catastrophe such as the coronavirus outbreak. Will we wake up now, I wonder? So at the very least, the card is about a rethink. You may well have been ignoring indications that you're on the wrong track, or maybe some new thought has been waiting for you to become aware of it. What are your entrenched concepts? Have friends suggested ideas to you which you've shrugged off without further sh thought? Almost all of us have developed views about ourselves and our world, politics, work, friends, many of which have become set in stone. It's now time to question each one of them. So you can see that she moves from really large concepts, right, about, about dimensionality, um, about the both the absolute um, miraculous aspect of life and human beings included in that because we are part of this miraculous world. We aren't something set apart, right? We're part of this. So she goes from these really large concepts, um, but then she really talks about how um, this can be for anything from a wake-up call down to even the smallest idea of using this to rethink some things, right? So while it seems like these are huge concepts and they are a lot of beautiful, powerful, large concepts, she gives you ways to use this in many of different types of readings. Um, that doesn't have to always do to, to do with universal or global um, concepts, but can be down to just, you know, maybe it's time to rethink some things. Um, I think that makes for a very usable and workable deck, um, which I think is important, right? When we're purchasing a deck, we want it to be used not just to, for one thing, but to be able to use it and get a variety of different um, messages. So I think she does an amazing job in bringing that into being being. So then we have the second dimension. Um, I love uh, how I'm going to just kind of so we can see two dimensions at a time because I think that I love the progression here, right? We have this horizontal line in space and again she talks about what we're visually seeing, 
right? Um, and then moves into theories and concepts and then brings it back to how would we use this in a reading? That that flow of okay, what am I looking at, and why am I? Why is it depicted this way? Really helps me to lean into the card itself and understand um, this understanding here. Then it's layering in the concepts that it's trying to uh, depict, and then it's taking us into a practical application. I think that's extremely useful. Um, she does talk about the Flatlanders um, idea. Um, she gives you some ideas there but then in terms of reading are you in a way like the Flatlanders locked into your own little two-dimensional world how free do you feel from society from old family issues from your education if you believe that you cannot change your life you're limiting yourself just like a Flatlander which she talked about earlier um, it, isn't it time to ask who you are do you love your life and if not what are you going to do about it don't get stuck in trap in this um, flat uh, two dimensions. We move from the two dimensions into the third dimension. Again, she's describing what we see here in the uh, card itself. She describes why there are triangles in here. She describes uh, a concept from one of the foremost contemporary physicists, John Wheeler, um, about how we need to participate in the universe um, and about the ideas of choice. Um, and then she goes into the practicality of how to really acknowledge our physical existence and how we exist um, and how we view that do we revel in it do we reject it uh, the physicality of life in the third dimension she talks about how this is a key question because to move up into the higher dimensions you need to fully accept the physicality of your reality as well to be able to then move forward um, so again love the way that um, the movement of the uh, first dimension second dimension three dimensional physicality here and then we start to push past that into the fourth um, dimension and I love that she talks again about how we start at the bottom of the image and a whole bunch of people here some are hand in hand walking the straight path um, again really descriptive of what we are looking at and then describes that the fourth dimension is said to be where time rather than three dimension space becomes paramount so now is talking about moving into the idea of time um, getting this card will indicate a move into a different plane of existence away from a realm where we're individual and separate um, she also um, has interpretations around time itself and what that means to each other are you feeling pressured by time that type of energy if you were to get this in a reading we move from the fourth dimension up to the fifth dimension and this is where we begin to encounter she says the variety of energies that surround and hold us the parallel existences such as daywick beings with the blueprint of the seasons and other beings we will encounter as we travel up the dimensions um, again she talks about the images and the colors that we see in this and she sees the fifth dimension as a bridge between the physical and the non physical this is outside of time remember we move from the physical into the uh, area of time and now we're moving outside of time and she talks about this she also talks about the number five um, which I love to see here as well and so she said to think about the unseen energies around you if you pull this card um, when things go wrong it talks about feeling like you're being stalked with things um, things that are we might be repressed but this is pulling ourselves out of um, physicality and time and into a lot of the things that are impacting us that are unseen moving from the fifth dimension to the sixth dimension she talks about how 
it's still possible in this dimension to experience both the physical structure underlying the universe and the many different realms that we can access here. She talks about this column of light flowing through the center um, and so on and so forth. Um, she gives you some mathematical information and charts to make some sense out of that, but then pulls you back into when this appears, it's about maintaining your balance and keeping everything in proportion. Um, so it talk, talks about proportionality here. Um, she also talks about the natural law and that there are things that flow in a natural way and to keep those um, moving in that flow of that with the sixth card. When we move into the seventh dimension, we have this image of an enormous tree. Again, she's giving us the image of the dimension of the card itself. She talks about trees being depicted as the bridge between heaven and earth. North, uh, Norse mythology has the rainbow bridge for gods to ascend to Valhalla. The universal tree is a living being. She talks about Yggdrasil. She talks about Banyan. She talks about the Bible um, use of tree of knowledge and good of evil and so on and so forth she has a whole section I love this one I actually pulled this card um, and set this out for a while but she talks about the different concepts of the imagery of tree and so um, but then pulls us back into how we would use this to think about the eternity versus transience um, she talks about um, messages coming through from the divine with this about potentiality and opportunities that arise through sync with not will. It's about lifting yourself above the usual noise to see the colors behind the color, the meanings behind what is seen and heard. The uh, eighth dimension here um, presents us with pure, unadulterated beauty, um, albeit beauty that we can only describe in similes. You might see it as a lotus flower, a fountain, love, um, and go on into this idea of symbology that we can't, we can't even describe um, this, this dimension without trying to compare it to something else to make sense of it. Um, in this card, she talks about how following our heart's desire about there being purpose and direction in our life that we can see beyond the mud she calls it of past hurts even old sorrows and pains um, and being uh, pulling ourselves out of that and seeing behind those things this is such a beautiful uh, image. I, I think I pulled this one as well already, and I just it was struck by uh, this particular image. And in fact, I had an experience um, a long time ago, I had this amazing dream, and I'm not going to go into the whole dream because there was a lot of really powerful understandings that came out of it with um, my son, um, who was moving into palliative care at that time, um, and would would pass on three three years later. But I, so I came to some some super personal uh, understandings. But this image looks almost exactly like I, I part of the the dream or it wasn't to me a dream it was a, a real experience that happened um, of standing in basically in the sky um, and then seeing through into another dimension this almost perfectly depicts that although my image through was a bit sharper and much more wasn't quite as um, soft I would say as this but it I've never seen anything that quite came that close to depicting what I saw in that moment and it really some that really deep understandings that came out of that experience that I had so this was really powerful um, to me and so um, This image of, is, is, of course, a three-dimensional attempt to depict a stream of pure energy, right, where everything is being brought into possibility. So she acknowledges that tr as a painter, trying to make a three, at best a three-dimensional look into something that is the ninth dimension, or something that is much as a dimension that we really can't, even through art, be able to really depict that. There's limitations with the medium to be able to depict um, uh, 
this. You know, it, I've been recently playing a lot in VR, so um, I have a virtual reality headset. And um, so some of this makes sense to me because there have been some, you know, some and the capability of VR is 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 limited in terms of what I think it's going to go to at some point. But just being able to move from a flat dimension of looking at a painting or looking at a photograph versus standing in a virtual reality where it all is 3D and multi-dimensional is such a huge shift, right? To step from an image looking flat at an image to being in an image and being able to turn around and look up and see a painting because there's there's some amazing artists who have made three-dimensional paintings or multi you know it would be three-dimensional paintings um, that you can literally stand in and I'm not just looking at the image from the outside but I'm standing inside of it I'm able to look up I'm able to look down it's an amazing experience right and that's a very still a very limited um, experience so I love that she talks about how depicting these dimensions in the brilliant, beautiful um, uh, tool of painting is itself limiting, right? So she, you, know, you do the best you can with what you have. She talks about how if you get this card, it's probably about your highest dreams, sensitivities, and emotions. The ones that bring tears of hope and longing to your eyes. Um, if you draw it, you'll know what it's saying. Allow yourself to connect with those deep emotions of love and longing. When we move into, I know I'm going relatively slow, but these are the 11 dimensions I think are important to lean into um, for the concepts here. Um, what I love here is that it's almost moving, you can see the image rise, this shift, just like we could see between the dot and then into the line. Um, she says this realm is impossible to grasp if we try to see through our everyday eyes. There are flickers of light similar to those that we sometimes see out of the corner of our eyes. There is a translucent being with rainbow rings. Which, you know, so, so again, she goes into um, what we're seeing and what she's trying to be able to depict. Some of these energies remind me of not as being the same thing, but if you use um, Brian Froud's um, Fairy. Is it the fairies or the heart of fairies? I have those decks mixed, so I start to blend which ones are which. But there is this, um, uh, you know, you have these very earthy fae creatures, but he also has a series of um, primal fae energies that are really almost seen as these sort of light sources with these vague outlines of wings. This this is the closest, I think, expression to that that I've seen in another deck besides that um, that I think is really powerful. If you, if you have that deck, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but that same sort of resonance comes through. Um, she talks about how the 10th dimension is all futures, all past, all possibilities, and, impossibil and impossibly all universes similar and dissimilar to our own, which have existed since the beginning of creation. Um, Daylights and other beings flicker in and out of, of beingness, rather like quantum particles in this. Um, drawing this card gives you the opportunity to connect to your energy directly to source. And it's interesting because I, in my uh, Oracle deck, when I was trying, you know, I had the four elements, but I also wanted the fifth element for me is of source. And how do you depict source? And for me, it is just like, uh, you know, the best I could come out with is this light, you know, I am not uh, a, a painter to uh, her ability. She encapsulates it far better. But that idea of just that, that brightness of light. Um, and But what I like here is that we're getting that feeling of um, energies kind of flicking in and out in a, in a static painting. You know, what, again, you, you, she's working with a medium and trying to express these amazing and powerful dimensions. And I think she does uh, an amazing job at doing so. Um, so, but this is really connecting you to that um, state of source, that pure energy there um, that I, that where everything is connected. And then she takes us to the 11th 
which um, kind of explodes into cosmic consciousness. Um, and she says here, the 11th dimension is depicted as an outpouring of light and energy set within a brilliant gold background. It might be seen as a multi-armed being similar to Shiva, although what cosmic consciousness would look like is, of course, anyone's guess. So I've just tried to show its immense potency. As the core, at its core, is a blinding white light, but instead of being the nuclear furnace of a star, it is a fulcrum of love and creativity, a neural network of unimaginable complexity. All dimensions feed into and out of this one and partake of it with each dimension having its own identity. If you find yourself with this card, she brings it down to interpretation. The interpretations will center about cosmic awareness and love. This is a love that enfolds and is the substance of every energy, each star, and each human creature in the entire cosmos. It is this love that creates the universe, multiverse if you prefer. We might even consider the universe as a byproduct of that love, an explosion of cosmic love. As I have already said, this does not mean it cannot destroy. That same love will allow energy to transform or decay. What has been transmuted into matter, atoms, quantum particles for instance, is never lost, although it might change form. The interpretation of the card is being aware that you are part of ultimate reality, the world soul expanding into its full creativity, joy, and fulfillment. It can also be about reconnection with each other, with the divine, and with all that is. So that is a walk through the 11 dimensions, right? I mean, I feel like that's like, like I could stop the video right here because we're, it's going to start to get overwhelming. But I think that it's, it's an amazing accomplishment to be able to try to the best of one's ability and she has some amazing artistic ability to to depict these different dimensions and what traveling through those might be and then also bringing it down to how we would use that in an actual reading um, i just think that those these 11 cards really show um the at the core of what's here um in such a powerful way so of course had to spend some time um, looking at that, uh, at those cards. I will try to move a little quickly, um, th more quickly through the rest of the cards. But again, I don't necessarily look at my walkthroughs as being something that are meant to be quick. I don't intend them to be quick and they're not for everybody. <laughs> and that's, and that's okay, right? That is okay. Um, okay. So, Moving from the dimensions, and of course, um, we can see that we've moved through these two sets of dimensions here. Um, the next cards are going to be in regards to, oops, did I miss? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, actually, one of them. Um, uh, oh, and the angelic. So this is the uh, the second. These two go through all the dimensions, and then it just has this card here of a card that's called the angelics. She talks about how the angelics can take on the form, or they can take on physical form, but their natural form is pure energy, very old. I really look at this as primal energies, uh, energies uh, she talks about before the formation of the first universe. Um, and so she, you know, this is something that pulls behind. She said that the angelics can be in many different dimensions simultaneously, while the day was holding both archetypes and blueprints of all the physical universe are more attuned to manifestations of the material. So I, you really, I do think of this in terms of, for me, Again, this is just my way of approaching these. The devas or the devas are a lot similar to, for me, um, uh, um, spirit of place. Sometimes vast places, but are kind of, as she said, connected into the material world. Where she sees angelics as being older than that, right? Uh, beyond that and can move in and out of those dimensions, but it's, it's, they are, are beyond that. They aren't tied to that material space at all. Um, so I really see this as that really uh, primal 
um, coming more directly out of source energy here. Um, and so then she talks about if you draw this card, you may have touched in some way to the high vibrational beings of conscious um, and um, what you can do with that in terms of the reading. But she does talk about how um, whatever you do when you get this card, whatever happens, that your essence is part of this uh, of, of the future, that you have a future that is moving forward, um, which is quite powerful, I think, to get in, in a reading as a card. So there we have that. And so then it moves into, so that she kind of puts together with, because, and that makes sense, right? I'm sorry, I'm trying to hold this book open, but not. You have the dimensions here, and then you have these angelic be beings, which kind of stand outside and move within all of the dimensions. More so than she sees the day was as being much more connected into the material realms as well. Um, and so these stand here as one um, suit. And then we move in. This is such a beautiful card. This, this gives me... Um, I'm, I'm getting a, a strong hit from this one. So this card, though, is speaking of the Dewas, right, themselves. So we have the Angelics, and then we have the Devas. Not separate cards of Devas, which we often see here, right? Um, but we're, this is a card about the Devas in in general um, and about how they hold the blueprints of creation and we see those emerging into beings. So she does say that like the angelics, the Dewas can move freely through and within dimensions. We experience them as wind or the swirling power of clouds or water or music heard thundering through our blood in a storm. We can see them in a myriad stunning ways that consciousness explores itself from a leaf to a star. In addition, like the angelics, the Dewas can manifest as physical entities when they wish. You may be fortunate enough to encounter one in human form, someone who exhibits a wondrous beauty and numinosity, or you may have a more psychic sense to see or feel the Dewas as they pass through our dimensions. So she goes on again to describe them more, but I really love this because I think that for me, this really speaks a lot to what divination at its core is is about seeing these energies whether it's in patterns in cards which are just reflecting concepts and other things in fact when she talks about and i'm talking about divination of of the earth of like stepping out and getting those messages when a particular bird swoops in a way or clouds move or the wind um, patterns change um being in touch with those energies is what, for me, divination really is about. We try to pull it into and mimic it into cards for the sake of sitting at a table and doing a reading, but that's just a reflection of that energy that is out there and active in the world, right? And so I love this because she talks about how, see what they ha the day was have to say if this card comes up. To do so, you just have to walk outside and consciously connect to the earth, if possible, and bear feet after a while notice things anything notice anything you think is calling you a glint of sunlight on leaves an interesting stone an insect um, or raising your eyes the clouds birdsong starlight or even the sun right and so this really to me this card speaks to that core essence of what it means to gain those messages right um, to pay attention and gain those messages that we then pull into cards and we pull onto the table but it that's just an expression of what is out there um, in its purest sense as we're just going about the business of walking through life so I, I really love um, this particular card I know I don't I don't know how to do this uh, and speed this up because I know I need to go a little bit faster. But uh, so we're going to move through the rest of these. This is the card for vibrations. Um, a reminder to become aware of the harmonies or discords within and without. 
I mean, look at the art. The art is just stunning uh, in this deck, uh, and it is, and it, it is in Devas as well, right? This, this is not. This really does blend well with. Uh, if you're comfortable and you've used this a lot, you do feel like you're just kind of moving into an expansion um, of that. But then it also has its own. Um, melody about it as well. This is light, dark, and love. And this is really about talking about your relationships, uh, not only with other people, but with light, love, and of course, the dark as well. How do you manage intimacy and vulnerability um, is what this card is about, which is so powerful. Here we have the Deep Magic card. I really love this card. Um, I pulled this card as well. This card is about creation, destruction, and knowledge. Um, does this apply to a creative word, urge or some basic, destru basic destructive forces in your life that you're struggling? She really gives you the light and the shadow here. Um, and again, she's giving you the image that we're seeing, the, uh, the concepts that might be around it, uh, behind it, and then how do you use this um, in a, uh, in a reading. This is gorgeous. Here we have presence. Um, the Deva of presence or Dewa of presence is an angelic being that may transform itself through the dimensions to visit us as time. This would be sort of like a, a guardian angel, a protector, a guide um, that we work with, um, which I think is really um, powerful to have again as a card. Um, we have synchronicity uh, in this card. Um, it's a reminder that you were put on earth to fulfill a specific destiny. You almost certainly have experienced synchronicities. And while you may not know what to do with them, you should never dismiss, dismiss them. Pay attention to the dreams and the synchronicities that come about um, to gain this understanding of what you're supposed to be fulfilling. Uh, she does this a lot beautifully in her artwork where you have such a wash of color, but then there is this form that we can see behind it. That I find these particular cards very powerful. This is called The Way, and I love that there is a way card. It li literally gives me goosebumps. Um, this is pointing the way, right? What is this day was saying to you? Is it really pointing in two different directions? And if so, why? Um, it's really a, a card about choice as well as picking the direction of the way that you're going to go in. This is so gorgeous. This also gives me goosebumps. All of this artwork just hits me at a level. And I, and I don't know if some of it is just because you know, I work with this deck a lot. I also work a lot with the Shimmering Veil, um, which, ha again, the artwork on that just hits me at such a deep level. Um, and so uh, I don't know if <laughs> what it is about her art, but it hits me at a very visceral level. Um, and this 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 deck has is no um, different. This is the journeying journeying card. Um, this uh, she talks about here. If you're feeling scattered or depressed, it might be best to simply clear your mind of negative thoughts, kind of, and and move yourself forward. You may have chosen to dream a future or an alternate past for yourself. Perhaps you've just seen colors. Whatever the vision is, pay attention to uh, that vision that is. Um, there. This also I like is that it talks more about literally journeying, about visiting your ancestors, visiting ancient ones, visiting your past. For me, it would be also past lives that you would be. Um, it kind of has the feeling of the Cosmovisions, if you work with that deck, the bridge card um, that I use a lot in past life readings. This kind of has a similar feel to that. Here we have the manifestation card. This card is about, oh no, I, I skipped. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the trust card. Um, this is about, um, you know, being able to trust in somebody. And it's like, reach out and grab your hands. Like, you know, you're, you're swinging on a trapeze and are you going to trust them enough to grab um, their hands? So issues and concepts regarding trust. This one is the manifestation card. It's about infinite potential, your highest dreams, what you want to manifest. And you can see this uh, vision, these uh, images that we have here. And again, she talks about what we're seeing, 
what is the concepts behind it and then how would you use that in the card this is gorgeous um creative stillness because we move from all of this real high energy of manifestation and then it's like the energy just pauses and stills for a minute you need space and time your to yourself you know just pause here for a minute and sit in stillness and you can just see that uh there beautifully here we have the perception card. Uh, it's basically, she said this image is based loosely on a cubist concept. You may have to work a little to see the various elements in the image itself because it's a card about perception. So you might have closed your eyes about certain ideas. Get a different perception. It's kind of hanged man energy, right? See, work a little bit to see things differently. This is so, so, so gorgeous. She talks about how the heavens and the oceans of earth are shown here, united by a wonderful thunderstorm. Um, she said in reading, you might see this as a divine touching the earth. You could also see this as ideas of when air and water and these different energies hit and mix, right? And, and what that causes of, um, that this manifests something when that happens. Um, that's, you also see it as the tempest you know looking at it as the storm um, it's gorgeous here we have nature so this is a card that encompasses all of nature you know that's you know with a 48 card deck she's kind of leaning into this idea of having you know a card that um, just expresses angelic in one just expresses day was in one right these big concepts in one card and so here we have all of nature in this um one card now i think we've moved into um we've moved through the devas and archetypes we've moved through the um inner states that we just had talked about and then now starting with this card we're looking at the physicality where now we do see you know heaven and earth touching we see all of nature um in this particular card um we move from nature into the life force card into the dawn uh card here into the twilight card uh, that's here and leading up to the wisdom keepers there so this is all being seen in the realm of physicality um, and again you know make use of this it really helps you to see the way in which these are connected um, she does a really good job i feel like she's taken a lot of effort um, to let us be able to see the scope of things so that we can then lean into the the individual meanings of the card and I for one really appreciated that in in day was of creation and I really appreciate that continuing in this one um, so and it talks about how do you fit into nature are you moving within it are you helpful are you harmful you know what is our space or where are you landing in the midst of nature and how are you interacting with that and in what ways Next, we have the Life Force card, right? Um, and so this is another one of those mysteries, right? And she has the double helix here um, in this understanding of all of the wonders of what it means, right? Our, our life force and what the how way that our cells come together into our body. It's, it's really powerful. She talks about how the, when the double helix was discovered, a new connection was made in our collective consciousness now we find such helices in the center of galaxy galaxies thus drawing this card may suggest new directions new connections and new energies then we have the dawn uh, the day of dawn and I think after that we said the um, twilight a powerful twilight card as well so we have the dawning of the new day and the the ending of a new day as well uh here in davic davic or daywick form i don't know if that's a uh, correct way to say it uh the next card we have is the wisdom keepers and this is our ancestor card which i love um, that this is here uh, in this deck it's something uh, as you know that I work very closely with and so I think it's important to have I, for me it's important to have that and I love that that is included there 
Um, and then we shift and you can see on the headings that the color headings um, are in alignment with this image here so that you can um, see what uh, you are in, uh, what um, particular suit basically that you're in. Um, I did wonder when I first started working with the day was of creation if it wouldn't be great to have had a color band with the number and or title um, on the card itself so you would know if it went together with particular other cards. Um, I didn't end up finding that to be an issue. Again, I don't pull large amount, amounts of these cards so it, it isn't as important to me to see if I'm getting multiple cards of the same dimension and again because we do have a, a handy um, guide and connection here um, it really does uh, help us to have a quick guide to the title as well as a quick guide to where that card um, exists in connection with the different dimensions and I find this to be perfectly suitable for the way that I use the cards so you know definitely sticking a um, which I will do right now but definitely sticking a tab, always have sticky tabs around, um, there, that really lets you quickly access um, that information. Then of course going, you can go in deeper if you um, need to. But this is really helpful for later down the road. You've worked with the cards, you understand the concepts of the cards, but you might wanna just quick peek into where is that falling. Um, that I think can be really helpful. In fact, I will probably go in and highlight uh, or, or kind of chunk off the colors here in the listing of the card so I even have a stronger connection to that while I get to know this deck. Um, here we have the authenticity card here. Um, this is about being aware of ourselves and being aware of um, uh, the dual nature that we have. As an authentic person, you need to express every side of yourself. Um, and talks about how we can express those things in a way. Um, she also talks about here, um, you may like the two wolves story that is found on page 123. I'm just going to peek at that. And see, I think I know that story, but oh, she has some extras back here we'll talk about. Oh yeah, I definitely have read this. Yeah, I have definitely read this before in, in other contexts. This is, um, she likes this version of the two wolves. It's an old, um, an old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. A fight is going on inside me, he says to the, to the boy. It is a terrible fight between two wolves. One is dark. He is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego, he continues. The other is light. He is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, uh, compassion, and faith. The same fight is going on inside you and every other person. And the grandson asks his grandfather which wolf will win. And the old Cherokee replies, if I feed them right, they will both win. And so then it goes on to say why, because you might say, um, I think there are versions which, you know, whichever, or I've seen it like in movies, people have used this, where somebody has said, you know, you've got the two wolves fighting and which is going to win, well, it's the one that you feed the most, right? You see that a lot. But in this version, he goes on and talks about acknowledging and feeding both um, to get a more authentic, full um, question. Um, and so, yeah, we'll come and look at what's back here. It looks like some interesting things there. But she refers you back to that story in the guidebook. This is gorgeous image. This is an image of the subconscious. Look deeper. Uh, number 33 is blockages. Uh, she has it kind of as fogs, but impediments to your way forward. And she talks in a lot of the cards of, of the lights and the shadow of both and all and the other cards. But then I do love that she, and same thing with Day Was of Creation, that she does talk about, um, there's, there are specific cards to shadows and blockages as well, which I find extremely useful um, in uh, a deck to be really well-rounded. This is the card of grief. Um, you know, I, we, we understand grief, unfortunately. 
And we're in the section of the mind and the shadow. So obviously we have seen um, these shadows in these cards moving from grief um, into this one is a card of shame and remorse. Um, and the next, oh, I feel like I have these, no. The next card is hubris and arrogance. Um, uh, when we can be too arrogant. Um, and it talks about if you look honestly at yourself and can't see any arrogance in your shadow, perhaps you know someone else who has. I would be surprised. You know, we all have um, spaces of ego and arrogance. This is such an interesting one here. This is greed. Um, although I also get, I, you know, as soon as I saw it, I got that sense of, yes, I can see the greediness for sure. Um, but I also got up, brought up concepts of sin eaters, which is kind of interesting on uh, greed and sort of a different uh, flipped in a different way but anyways that's just a, a, a connection that dropped or pulled up in this um, she <laughs> she says you've drawn the green card and surreptitiously put it back in the deck we've all done that like I don't want that card right I don't want that rune uh, that me and nowadays right I don't want that rune I'm putting it back and then it just pops up again um, it's not really a card anyone wants to acknowledge, but you know when this comes up, there is a voraciousness, right, that comes up, and she really does also though talk about the complexity of that. That it's not as simple as we make it seem to be, um, and so she definitely goes into issues of greed here. Um, and then the last one here we have, I think, of the chat. No. Sorry, there's one more after in the shadow, which I think is the shadow. Um, but this is lies and malice. Uh, these shadow images are never easy to find in a reading. However, if you draw this card, be honest with yourself. Is it referring to something specific? A situation where you skated by not being completely honest? Or was there a malice, malicious intent that was ignored? Um, and so it doesn't, it, it could be a situation that we're in. It depends on what we're doing the reading on, right? This lets us know that there could be um, some um, uh, untrustworthy untrustworthy things going on is that intentional or is that not intentional is what we might need to sit with here and then the last um, one that we have here is called the shadow um, and she said that this card actually came at an early stage in this deck's creation. She, I showed someone being dragged down into crimson netherworld by dark claws, which are not just the figure's personal demons, but mankind. However, as time moved on, it's become painfully clear to me and others that we are experiencing a resurgence of this collective shadow of humanity. So instead of the individuality, and she does talk in this deck, there are uh, references of, of COVID because obviously this pandemic was going on as she was um, working through this deck and um, as she was probably finishing up and writing the guidebook and so um, understanding um, that so, some understanding of that does show up in this deck um, I do think that she makes it um, so that that is not dated where if you haven't come out of a pandemic you're not going to understand or it's not going to have relevance i think that all of the cards have um relevance to um this but what she has done is take this into this broader energy of the collective shadow we've looked at some personal shadows already and this card then broadens it into that bigger shadow What's interesting is that we move from this understanding of the collective shadow um, and then we move into this card here which is called the spinning card and this is of that pull, that tension between knowing and understanding and having a desire to move forward, right? But then there is that fear of really completely dissolving the old even if the old contains shadow, right? Um, and a lot of shadow. And so it really shows that tension that we are in where we know 
know that something needs to change, but we don't really want to let go of everything that was, and we feel like we're going to lose everything. And so what that might look like um, to uh, have that push and that pull, I think we know exactly what that looks like. But So we have that card there. And then what it moves into, and I'm going to zoom this out a little bit here so they can fit. We have three cards. One is the last fish, one is the last tree, and one is the last bee. And so we have this um, sort of a trajectory of if we if we choose not to make any changes, if we choose not to um, you know let go of uh, conceptions and actions and make new and better choices and actions moving forward, we can see where the consequences of those things. Um, um, can come forward and so we have the last fish and that feeling of really a wake-up call of feeling as if um, we're fish out of water um, and that our environment can no longer serve um, and be a healthy environment to live in uh, we have the um, the last tree and this uh, uh this really this picture of if we aren't taking care of the world um and the world starts to die off and what happens when we lose the trees which makes the oxygen and you know all of that that connective energy when we lose our waterways when we lose um our trees uh, when we lose our bees and you know other um, um creatures that make uh, a part of our the, the connective energy and what makes the world habitable, right? If we don't think about our consequences of our actions, um, where those things can lead uh, and need a need to when these come up to um, stop sleepwalking and instead um, start to make conscious decisions that are going to move us into a better space. So we have cards like that, right? So we see this movement between the shadow, the the tension between knowing we've got to change but not wanting to change the consequences of not changing although she gives other ways to interpret the cards and then a movement towards a global healing right because we're moving away from this idea or understanding of global um, or collective shadow and the need to have a collective global healing take place right so we can see that in this card um, and then that moves we see a lot of this movement here um, if we can find that space to global healing um, then we can start to make that shift that dimensional shift and have actual true transformation take place and then we can see and now we can start to actually dream a different world, dream a fresh and new world um, for ourselves after we reach that state of transformation. And um, what I love is this card here, which is the possible human. Um, I really like that while this deck or this guidebook does have environmental um, concerns being raised, political concerns that are being raised, it's not to that degree in which we're saying, you know let's just get rid of human beings because we're like the evil something separate and outside of the whole thing causing the problem right we are part of nature this whole dimension that this is all talking about includes humans right we are part of that we aren't something separate that has come um, and and is destroying things we're part of it so let's reimagine up the possible humans and she talks about how you know, when we see babies with that clarity of their eyes, we see full potential of human beings. Unfortunately, then life and experience and people teach us to be, teach the magic out of us, teach the ability to see um, the uh, fae, uh, magic all around us, teach us to see the world in ways that are skewed and lensed, uh, negatively lensed, right? And so what this card though gets to is that if we can have have global healing if we can find true human um, true transformation we can view we can start to 
dream a different way of doing things, a different world, and we can see the full potential of human beings not um, that we may not always see realized now. Um, and then that takes us to that final step of through the veil and into the mystery, um, which is really about full transformation, death and rebirth, union and disillusion. It just kind of contains all of the mysteries that then are open before us in that space, um, which is really powerful. These last chunk of cards are really a powerful message that she pulls in. And I don't feel like it, it beats us over the top of the head. Um, I feel like it is just kind of a, a hard look at where some of our choices as a collective whole have led us, um, but also sees um, how can we start to envision a path out of that and into a different space and into a different dimension. So, um, and that wraps up the cards so I know that's a lot right that's a lot of conversation about this deck but there are just some decks I mean there's just no way to to cut it there are some decks that if you really want to understand what's going on besides just that these are beautiful art cards with you know titles and keywords on them there are some decks that I do think you just need a real good look at so that for two things obviously so that if you have this deck you know it, it helps us to sit down together and kind of look at what it's doing if you don't have a deck you ha this isn't a, a what I call just a simple deck pull a card for aff affirmations again nothing wrong with those decks I have some that I absolutely love but this is um uh a beautiful and complex deck and I think understanding that can help us understand if this is a deck for us or not um, so yeah um, so there we have it there again I don't let's zoom back out this shuffles really beautifully again it's a bit thicker cardstock than um, it's a bit thicker cardstock than the last uh, deck, but that was a thicker deck as well. This shuffles really beautiful. I've shuffled this before. I had put it back into order. Um, it shuffles really beautiful, and um, so it's not too thick, and it's not. And you can bridge it. So it's not a, a, as bridgy of a bridge, but it bridges, and it it really feels good in the hand. It's got that matteness that isn't sticky at all, which is gorgeous. So let's see what we get to wrap up this very long walkthrough with a message. So here we have the twelfth card, and this is the and the card that represents the angelic beings. Um, uh, so beings outside even of the devas. Let me put some stuff out of the way here and zoom in. And let's, oops, I got the wrong book. And you can always double check. I just remember that one. I, I, have, I haven't used this deck too much. But I, you will find this, that they the titles are, or what they're representing really pops out quite quickly when you start to work with things. But you have this quick where you can look at it and say, okay, that's one of the angelics. You can see um, over here that that's part of the 11 dimensions and is the one that sort of wraps up that dimension. So again, this is really helpful um, to kind of getting a quick snap of while you're getting to know the deck of what that card is quick grab its title um, and and where it stands in um, position with the rest of the cards I really love uh, really love this aspect um, it, it was something that I used a lot in the uh, devas of creation although there was again 72 cards so it was split into these two pages and it didn't have them right next so I used to have this bookmarked too um, and used it in a similar way and it worked really well when I was you know getting comfortable with the deck itself with this being a smaller deck she can get it all um, into two pages and that makes it even more handy to be able to do so and then of course you have your page number right there so that you can go um, and refer to it although it's super easy just to also be looking you know at not this number but look the page number but look at the number here 
and find your card that way too without even going there. If you just know that you want to read the whole thing, you haven't read through it, um, you're at the very beginning of things, then you can just go straight there. Although I still like, um, you know, to, to suggest that you hone into this page first just to get an idea of where it sits in relation to the rest, then going into um, the full um, meaning there. But this is really about having touched something of the, in that conscious um, higher level of beings and that there is a connection that's there. There is a message that's there. There's a flicker behind um, um, thing and an understanding that um, we are far more than we realize that we are and that we are going to continue to exist and move forward um, from this point. Um, I think it's a great card to pull um, for this particular, uh, you know, just to kind of wrap it up uh, for the reading. But I did want to show also, let me zoom out here. So again, mostly uh, I see myself pulling single energies, right? I, I just, I just, from using the devas or devas of creation, that's just how I use that. But you certainly could pull like a past, present, and future um, and utilize that to get a feel of that larger energy uh, in this motion because it's good to see um, when you have, I think this is the blockage card here. And so and again, you can visually, even if you don't know exactly what the title is, like you can visually see um, uh, a movement of energy and say, okay, if something in this present doesn't change, we're really going to be blocked here until we make a major change. And then you might pull a card for a major change, or you might pull, let me grab a tarot deck, like, of course, in this case, I would use the Shimmer, Shimmering Veil because it's the same artist number one and number two I just love this deck right um, and again I'm not trying to get a real reading here so I'm not going to over shuffle but then you might pull from the tarot deck here and say um, okay I'm going to pull a message on I don't want to get stuck here I don't want to be blocked from moving forward from where I'm at right now so let me pull three tarot cards to then lean into the energy of how can I unblock that right because I don't look as divination as this is what's going to happen I say right now this is where the energy is at. It's really stuck in its block. What do I need to do to start to shift that energy? And then I would move into the tarot cards. And these are the exact same size. I haven't really noticed that before, uh, but these are the exact same size, um, which makes for a really nice um, six card. So this is the one way that I might use three cards, right? I don't see personally myself using more than three cards. I haven't with the Davis of Creation. It's always been one card, three cards, sometimes two cards as a light and a shadow. I've definitely done that uh, for myself as well. Um, but I've never, I don't think, I, I can, I feel like I can say I've never pulled more personally than three cards with the day it was of creation and I don't see myself doing that with this deck but this I think is a really great way to utilize um, the cards and then pull them in with a tarot deck or something to you know if this was something else right it doesn't have to be a blockage but if there was oops wrong 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 deck wrong deck um, you know, if this was something else where I can see my highest potential as a human um, and move into the future in that highest potential, then I might pull three cards here to say, okay, well, what do I need to um, do to realize that highest um, potential for myself, right? So I start here and then I move into um, getting some more specifics because this is big energy. The other thing is, is that I often pull one to sit with like I do with the um, Weaver's Oracle because um, they're big energies. I'm going to pull that and I'm going to read about it and I'm going to have it sitting up on my space um, to sit with and to read with. The other thing that I can see myself doing here is that there is an ancestor card here. So I could literally you know, shuffle, 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 find the ancestor card and see the cards that are on either side of the ancestor card um, and get a message from my ancestors that way or a message from higher consciousness or a message from nature or, um, you know, pulling these 
some of these as, you know, maybe I'm feeling like a fish out of water. So now I'm going to pull the cards on either side um, and use those as powerful significator cards to get then a two card message. Um, I think that's something that I would do with this card um, as well. You could pull it for that highest consciousness card. You could pull that card um, and, you know, that, that, um, movement and the flux of all the dimensions and get a message from across the dimensions you know you, you get the idea right um that's the types of readings that i would do with a deck like this simply because i've worked with the davis of creation and i know what kind of readings i do with that deck um but there's a lot of potential here um for readings and um that I think can be powerful on their own, used in conjunction. You can also pull one of these, again, powerful energies, and then do you know, a tarot reading like we did, or do a rune casting for sure. Uh, pull from the runes, or pull from oems, or um, you know, do a charm casting on top of it for the specifics. Um, take the big energy and then get some specifics, um, combining it with another system as well. So it's very versatile, um, as well as extremely powerful and intentional in its own right. So I hope that this helps. I know that I, I feel like somebody might ask though, like would you ever then combine them together? I don't think I would. A, that would be a humongous deck. Um, and I just, I feel like this is, does what it does and it does that well. And this, you know, it can be used separately. You could pull three and three and, and work with that. I haven't tried that yet. I've only done it with tarot. Um, but I see myself, A, the card stocks are not the same. Um, so I don't know how well they would shuffle together. You might always split between um, this card stock and this card stock. I don't really like to combine decks unless the card stock is the same because I do think you don't get a natural split. It's always going to split um, where between those two um, card types. Um, that is my thinking on that. So I don't see myself um, ever mixing these together. This is a 72 card deck that works and functions very well um, on its own. Um, so I don't really see myself um, mixing them but they are the same size so you know if somebody would want to try to mix them you certainly could if you have them both and have mixed them let me know in the comments uh, what you think about it and if you like to utilize it that way and what you what you get out of that I'd love to hear it but my intention is to use the decks um, separately um, but there that's I figured somebody might ask that so okay I hope that you've enjoyed this. It has been a um, wonderful experience. I learn so much about um, these kinds of decks when I do something like this. So it is of great benefit to me. And so I hope that some of you have enjoyed this deep dive into this uh, wonderful deck.